Okay, the other thing that I'd like to just, again, say a couple of words about because, again, very basic and it's something that you should be introduced to uh, within the foreign tax credit area. And that is what accounting method uh, is applicable to decide which year a tax relates to. Now, why is that important? It's important because uh, we saw, you know, in the prior slide that uh, how much tax we paid each year, uh, of course, allowed a foreign tax credit for that year, but also it starts if, there, if, if the foreign tax results in an excess foreign tax credit position, it starts the counting of the carry back one year and the carry forward uh, for 10 years. How do we decide what method you're on? If you're a corporation, I think probably in most cases you're on an accrual basis. I mean, most corporations tend to be on an accrual accounting basis. And in that case, the tax will be considered to arise in the year to which the income, the related income uh, uh, is accounted for. Uh, let's say a corporation is in a service business. It earns service fees. It performs the services in year one. It collects the cash in year two. The income is generally going to be accrued into year one. So even though the tax might be paid to the foreign government in year two, it'll relate to year one and under an accrual method, you account for the income and the, the tax in year one, accrual method. Now, where you see the cash method normally is individuals. Uh, individuals are normally on cash method. So if you are on a cash method, the code gives you the right to elect the accrual method. Even though you're still on the cash method for income, they allow you to accrue foreign taxes if you elect it. And because this election is, you know, like forever, uh, you should make the election, you know, only if there's an actual benefit. When you make the election, is that for any of your foreign um, credits or? For yeah. all. For all, no matter how many businesses you have. I believe that's the case, yeah. As I recall, I had a, a brief example a uh, brief example here, uh, and this certainly is something that I saw a lot uh, when I was overseas, because very typically, and again, this again affects individuals. Uh, if an individual moves to another country and starts to become a taxpayer because he's earning wages in that other country, very often the local tax obligation will be settled in the following year. So uh, in this example, okay, uh, uh, the expatriate goes to country X in year one, and there's a 40% individual income tax, but the tax is paid one year in arrears. You know, in the same sense that uh, if you have income here in the United States, okay, there can be estimated tax payments and withholding, but you settle the, you know, final amount of tax on April 15th. Well, uh, it can be very often the case uh, for U.S. people going overseas that maybe they're not paid by a local entity, so there's no tax withholding. Maybe they're paid by the the home office in the home country, uh, which is the United States in this case. There might be U.S. withholding, but there's not withholding in that foreign country where the person is now living. 
So when he files his tax return in year two, he pays all of the tax for year one to that country. Okay, so the income relates to year one, but he pays the tax in year two. Now, under a cash basis, if we do not elect the accrual method, that means in year one, when, the, uh, when he files his US tax return, he'll have zero foreign tax credit. But, and assuming a 37% tax rate, he pays 37 of US tax on income of 100. You know, there's just no foreign tax credit because on the cash basis, the tax hasn't been created yet. Now, again, using this example where the country imposes 40%, and the uh, uh, US tax rate is 37. In year two, if he continues, like I say, on the cash basis, he'll have actual 40 of foreign taxes. He'll have a US tax before foreign tax credit of 37. We'll assume the limitation is also 37. The foreign tax credit limitation is 37. So he'll have three of excess foreign tax credit. That three, OK, could be carried back to year one. But going forward, he'll never be able to get back any more than that three. Now, if he elected the accrual method in either year one or year two, then he's able to claim the, 30, the 40 of foreign tax credit for year one. If he, claim, if he elects the accrual method, even though the tax is paid in year two, he can claim it for year one, and his US tax for year one is zeroed out. The point is that this election for accrual can be very significant uh, in many cases. Uh, I've seen that happen uh, quite often. But because you, once you make the election, you're on that forever, so to speak, the election shouldn't be made lightly. Any questions on this? Uh, yes, uh, patients. So in the final accrual example you have, where he elects in year three. In year two, can he carry back like he did in the cash basis example? Right. He could, uh, in three year, if he makes the election in year three, he can carry back to year two, but he cannot carry back to year one. Gotcha. So the 37 is paid to the U.S. and will never come back. Or, uh, yeah, that's gone. Okay. 